print making is not a process that you can, you have 20 minutes, you don't know what to do to kill it in the studio. You can't set up or tear down in 20 minutes. You can't print anything in 20 minutes. These are oil-based inks, and oil-based inks, um, the enemy is um, tear. So I have to be really careful and make sure I seal everything back up. process anytime you're cutting wood uh, which means you cut away what you don't want ink and you ink the surface so this is a um, actually a small bird that I found dead and I it was so beautiful and I was looking at the bird and thinking that it's a shame how beautiful birds are and you really can't get close enough to enjoy them unless they're dead. I photographed the bird and uh, started working with it and cutting. I started with a smaller one and I did a dry point which is a talio process. The primary definition of printmaking, as we're do, as I do anyway, is you're talking about taking a non-porous matrix and doing something to it that gives you a design, inking that, and then transferring that ink from the non-porous matrix. to a porous matrix, which is in this case, paper. Okay, once it touches, that's down. press, which is the easy way to transfer the ink. So I use a hand baron. The good thing about using the baron is that you can lift it up and take a look and see what's happening and see if it's doing what you want it to. And if not, you just put it back down a little bit more. I wanted to do these two birds together. It's kind of a yin and a yang thing. And what I'll probably do is I'll go back in and add, I sometimes like to add threads and stuff and tie them um, in together. And I've been working on a series. Um, these dead birds uh, are called uh, Death Becomes Her. And it's about the cycle of life, how things are born and they live and they die. And when they die, they disappear into the ground and um, new things come about and we're all tied together. And it's, I started thinking about this when my grandmother passed away and I read some of her writings about her grandmother. And I realized that even though I didn't know her grandmother's name, that there was a direct influence on who I am today because of that woman. And what I leave to my kids and my grandkids um, in the years to come will be what happens later on. So that connection um, that we're all tied in this together. The title of this piece is Put on Display. And it's dealing with being put on display. And it comes from those old 
paintings that you see and there'd be these bowls of fruit and there would be pheasants hanging in the background. And it was all about display. And even though they're beautiful and they're dead, so this was kind of my interpretation of those kind of paintings. And their hands are tied and their mouth are tied because they're dead and they can't really, can't tell anymore. So this is also, this is the same bird, except smaller. That was the first one that I cut. In all printmaking processes, every time you want to add a color, you have to have a different plate. So in this case, on these water lilies, the white is the paper, and you see three other colors, the navy blue and the red and the pink. So that means there's three plates that was added to that. And that's a wood process that, um, and you can see here, are, these are the plates. And the final plate, the final plate is always the darkest plate. And you can tell that was where the, that blue came from. The process is called a key block process. This being the key block, so this one is the one that's cut first. And you cut this one and then everything else matches to this so that you have perfect registration. So this is an etching plate. Um, it is on a zinc plate here that I um, put an image on. You draw on it when there's a covering on it and then you put it into the acid and the acid eats it away. So this is the opposite process than the relief process. So in the relief process, remember you cut away what you don't want to uh, have ink on. In this case, you cut or you mark what you do want to have ink on it. So all the ink is, is actually below the surface on this one. So this one, instead of taking a brayer and adding the ink to it, this one I just add a plastic card. And all I want to do is get as much ink as possible under the surface. And you need to use something really pretty soft so that you don't actually scratch the plates. Let me scratch the plates, then that will show every mark with printmaking, every mark that you make, every cut, every mistake is there on the plate. There's nothing you can do most of the time to get rid of it. This is called palming. When I'm trying to palm, I'm trying to make sure I get everything off. So with the intaglio process, because the ink is under the surface, then what you have to do is you have to be able to go in and pull that ink out. And so typically what you would do is either use wet paper or you have to use an Asian paper that's soft that will go down into um, the grooves there. And you need um, the pressure from a press and blankets on it. And the blankets will um, push down into there and pull that ink back up and that's what you're looking for. The uh, advantage of making a uh, zinc plate like this is that I can make hundreds and hundreds of, of images, as many as I want to. And when I get done with that, I'm going to add the baby oil and let it set for a minute and it will help pull that ink that's left over, clean it all off and then I'll alcohol it and I'll wrap it all up and put it away and I can get it out next week, next month, next year, 10, 20 years from now and it'll still be just exactly the same. Here's the finished one. Um, as you can see, I added some other elements and some sewing to it like I like to do. 
um, but this is the same plate and you can do anything you want to do with them. You can make them all exactly alike for an addition or make them a series, which means they're all the same, they're all similar.